let's have some fun. You only live but once, and when you're dead, you're done. So let the good time roll. I say let the good time roll. I don't care if you're young or old. You ought to get together and let the good time roll. Don't sit there mumbling. So as you can see, we have about one module left, which is the controller, and that's going to go on this breadboard here. But before we get into exactly what this is and how we're going to start building it, what I want to do first is talk about these lines, and I want to label all these lines. I've done some of them already, like I've labeled this. This is the clock line, so the clock goes into this pin for the, from, for the program counter, and this is also a clock, and this is clear, which is active high and then this is load which is an active low line so I did this for a lot of the pins already um, for a lot of these control pins but I still have a few more to do like you can see on these output registers there's no labels and here on the instruction register no labels as well as I'm not really sure what this line does for the RAM module but we're gonna go through the data sheets and we're gonna figure out what all these lines do and today we're going to label them up alright so we're gonna start with the instruction register and that's partly because the instruction register is actually incomplete, which is something I failed to mention in the last video. So the reason it's incomplete is because remember in the last video how I talked about if a register or any module, I guess, is going to be putting data onto the bus, then it needs a three-state buffer to make sure that those pins on the bus are floating. Now, the instruction register, believe it or not, will be putting data onto the bus, and it's only going to be putting four bits. Now remember, the instruction register holds two parts for us. The first part is the instruction, and the second part is going to be a memory address. And the memory address is going to go onto the bus and through the bus up to the memory address register so we can access uh, different addresses in our memory module, obviously. So the memory address part is going to be going through the bus. The actual instruction part, the execution part, the first four bits, is not going to be going onto the bus. It's going to be going directly into our controller. It's not going to need to go through the bus or anything like that. So therefore, we only need a four-bit buffer. Now, I only have eight-bit buffer chips, so we'll just use an eight-bit buffer chip and only use four of those bits. And we'll go ahead and build that right now. So the first thing is, obviously, we have to take off this label. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm just going to rebuild this instruction register from scratch, uh, mostly because I don't like the orientation of the way that this LED display looks and all. So I'm just going to go ahead and redo the whole thing and add our buffer right here. Okay, so here I finished it um, and we just have a few parts missing. So this is our clock signal, this is our load signal, active low, and this is our clear signal, which is active high. Now this is our chip for the three-state buffer and a unique feature of this chip is actually we can choose the direction at which these three-state buffers work. So for example, we could have the bus on this side and then have our signal, our instruction register on this side and then have them connect this way. Now it depends on which way is you know better for you depending on the layout of your breadboard. Now for us, I have all the cues on this side of the breadboard which is the A side. So I'm just going to connect the instruction register here and the breadboard here. So we need to define the direction as A to B which means you set this direction pin as high. So I'm just going to go ahead and set that pin. So I set this one as high. So now the direction is flowing from this side to this side which means that this side of the three state buffer should be connected to the bus. Now this is also the data side of the 4-bit registers, which means that this side of the 4-bit register should also be connected to the bus. And since this is connected to the bus and this is connected to the bus, we can actually just connect this side up to this side of the 3-state buffer and then connect this side of the 3-state buffer up to the bus once we start doing that. You know, it may seem weird because this is technically an input here and this is actually an output. Um, so you're connecting inputs to outputs, so it might seem like you're looping around or something, the data, but it's not because when we're actually trying to put data onto the bus, then we enable this three-state buffer and whatever is in the register go down onto the bus, but we're making sure that the load line is high, which means that we are not loading data from these signals into the register, which means we're either using this register as an output to put data on the bus, or when we have the load line down, then we're using uh, this register as an input, and we're taking data into the bus and loading that into the register. So we'll never be doing those two at the same time, so it won't be an issue. So we can just go ahead and take these data lines of the 4-bit register and connect them up to the B side of this 3-state buffer. Alright, so I've finished the instruction register here, and I have labeled all the lines, so clear, load, clock, and output enable. And then this side is going to connect up to the bus over here when we've uh, finished putting everything together. So now we can go ahead and just, I guess, put the label back on. And so instruction register is done and labeled. So now we can move on to labeling everything else. So I'm going to go ahead and 
label the RAM module, and we only have a couple lines here. I think this one, this one, and this one, and I'm not sure. I think these are just bus lines, so we can focus on those. Um, those aren't really necessary to be labeled right now. The way we're going to label these lines is we're just going to go through, and this looks like the 74LS173. Okay, so that means that these three are, these four are all bus lines. Those are the addresses. So that's the address line. This is the clear line, um, which I guess I have tied low. So this is going to be our enable line then, and this is going to be our clock signal. So I'm going to go ahead and label these two. Alright, so I've labeled these two lines as load, um, active low, obviously, and then we have the clock signal here. So then we have to move down here, and I'm not sure what chip this is. It says it's the 74LS189. So let me go ahead and get the data sheet for that. Okay, so here's the data sheet for the 74LS189. So if we go down here, we can see, I think we're connected for, uh, to pin 3 right here. So if we look on the data sheet, pin 3 is the active low right enable line. So then we can go ahead and just make our label saying that this is an active low right enable line. With this line, then this RAM module is finished being labeled. And the clock doesn't need any labeling, so that's done. And the program counter only has one label, which is the clock, so that's done. So that brings us to the output register. So we have a few lines here. This is the signed versus unsigned bit line, which I guess I could label that, but um, it's not really necessary. Now this is just another register, so we have our classic register um, lines that we need to control. So this should be the clock line, this should be the clear line, and this should be our active low load line. So we can just go ahead and label those up right now. I have all these lines labeled now. I decided not to uh, label this one. So that means that the output register is done being labeled. And all we have left is the ALU, but the ALU I already labeled beforehand. So this is the A registers, and the actual ALU I had already uh, labeled here. So there's one more thing that I want to do here, and that is to add a little LED array to show the output of this ALU um, right here. Now, as luck would have it, this LED array does not actually fit here. In fact, it's about one pin too long. But because this is a 10-bit array, um, instead of skipping the first, the middle two like I usually do, what I'm going to do is I'm going to not use the last two. So we're going to go from 0 to 8 here and then have two that are that are not being used on the end. And so this way I can actually plug this into the breadboard and it'll fit. And so then we can actually see what's inside the ALU. But it'll run a little bit off the edge, but I don't really care. So we're going to help go ahead and do that now. So I finished the ALU here, so I, we have our LED array right here and we have everything labeled up so the next part is just to get everything back into its architecture form. Now I know this was a little bit more of a shorter and less eventful video and that's okay because it was still necessary at the same time to make sure that we have all of our labels done right and all of our LED arrays done properly so that we can actually see what's going on so that in the next video when we connect everything up to the bus and we start working and talking about what our controller slash sequencer is going to do we're not super confused. So. Uh, please like this video if you liked it, and subscribe to see more like this. My name is Kiel Mohadeen, and I'll catch you guys later.